Welcome to Suncoast Spotlight. Thank you for tuning in. I'm your host, Jeannie Corcoran, the Film Commissioner for Sarasota County, and I have, as always, amazing guests that are part of our industry in film and television and new media, print media, all forms of communication come to our show, and we're always so grateful. With me today is the amazing, legendary comic book creator, artist, entrepreneur, filmmaker, writer, producer, hmm, did I miss anything? No, I'm tired Bob just Layton. listening to you. <laughs> Bob oh Layton, God. best known for Iron Man and Ant-Man, and owning a comic a company of his own, and two actually. two actually, so many, so many credits we're gonna talk about today. And the show is brought to you through the partnership of the Educational Channel, the Suncoast Technical College, the Digital Filmmaking Department, headed by Bob Gray at STC, and we're so glad you're here with us. Thanks for tuning in. So Bob, are you ready to get this rolling? Yes, let's pretend we don't know each other. That's right. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> and as people may notice behind you, you have a pop-up banner of Iron Man, and I guess that goes with you everywhere you go, doesn't it? It pretty much does, yeah. I mean, because you know, I do conventions all around the world. So, mm -hmm. uh, In fact, I first met you at Comic-Con New York. That's true. Yes. That's true, last year. And I was there promoting uh, the Thunder Agents. Right, think, and for those, the United who, Nations. those who have watched this show have uh, seen Michael Uslin, who is the executive producer right. and originator of all the Batman movies, and a good buddy of yours. Well, what they don't know is he's a childhood friend of mine. I've yeah. known Michael since he was 19 years old. Oh, yeah. wow. So we, we go back that far. Isn't he still 19 years old? Well, in his head. Yes. Yes. yes, yes. <laughs> so Michael Uslan is, yes. is many wonderful things, and one of the things I appreciate most is that he introduces me to other wonderful people like Bob Layton. And uh, we're also going to be interviewing a friend of yours who's a renowned actor, but we'll talk about that later on the show. Right now, I just want to talk about you. Uh, I, yeah, I'd rather, I'd rather talk about me than him, too. So tell me now, <laughs> now, you are, now you are located occasionally here in the Tampa Bay area. You have a little home site here, and you're going to go back and forth between here and L.A., is that right? Mm, well, uh, mostly here. Mostly here. Mostly here, yeah, because I've been out in L.A. for the last 10 years. Right. Uh, you know, working in the business, and now I've come back here, as you know, uh -huh. to establish, they don't know, so we're going to talk about we're it. We're going to talk about To establish, a, you know, a, a larger film presence here in the state of Florida. Mm -hmm. So I am working with wonderful people such as yourself and, the, and other film commissioners, basically, to put together... A, uh, a package of uh, a film slates right. uh, of uh, uh, projects that we can do here in the state of Florida. Wonderful. I hope everybody at home is listening to that and everybody in the sound of my voice in the Tampa Bay region especially that Bob wants to do a slate of films. That means more than one right here in our Tampa Bay area. So and I'll be looking for talented young people to join yes, me. Yes, we're class. looking for, yes. for students, we're looking for interns, but we're also going to be looking to steer you to equipment and crew and above the line people and below the line people and everything in between. I, when equipment I, providers When I ran more. Valiant, the company, it was a startup mm -hmm. company that wound up being the third largest publisher in America. The, how I engineered that was finding hungry young talent, mm -hmm. people who really shared that vision that I had, who wanted to be part of that and, and basically trained them on the job as they went along. Mm -hmm. And that seemed to be a working, a winning formula for us. And like I said, we grew from being a startup to the third largest publisher right after under Marvel and DC. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm going to try to use the same sort of model here in Florida, mm -hmm. looking for talented uh, young people when they, of course, when they're of age, mm -hmm. you know, to to because uh, 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 I know there's laws down here, right? You right, know, right. Well, I, I well actually, Florida. That's what I hear. Florida there's some a, laws. We have know? more and more young talent coming up to the ranks every single day. Florida is yes. much younger than it used to be, yeah. and we have wonderful mature talent. But I want to take you back in time. Oh my God! I want to take you back in time to Charlton Comics. Tell me oh, a little bit you, about Mr. Peabody. Yes, uh, okay. uh, you be Sherman, I'll be Mr. Peabody, <laughs> and we're going to go back and uh, talk about Charlton Comics in the bowling alley. Tell well, me how yeah. you got started. Well, actually, because you know about this, because uh, a friend of mine is making a documentary mm -hmm. on the history of Charlton Comics, which is a very small comic book company uh, in Derby, Connecticut, that started in the fifties by two guys who were in jail at the time, who basically came up with the idea of starting their own publishing company. In jail, that's yeah, it was a key point Charles, of that. Yeah, and and uh, they, they set up their offices inside of a bowling alley. <laughs> and, and if you guys want to see this, you can look up uh, on YouTube, look up Charlton movie trailer, and take a look at the scissor reel that they put together for this thing, and I guarantee you, if you don't laugh, something's wrong with you, okay? Didn't you refer to it as like a three-legged dog? Yeah, it's anything? basically, Charlton was the three-legged dog of the comic book industry, <laughs> but what's really amazing is stuff like The Watchmen and, and, and creators such as myself and Steve Ditko and, 
and uh, names to conjure with came out of Charlton, mm -hmm. even though they're defunct now. Those and those characters that uh, that were created there, they still exist now. DC acquired them, mm -hmm. but they 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 were such a fundamental little linchpin in comic book history, but totally unknown. People have never heard of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, when my friends, Keith and Jackie, decided to make this documentary, uh, it was uh, what they put together in the few minutes that they put together is really amazing. You saw it and you, la it. And you laughed. And I, I dared you to if, watch it without laughing. Right. I did because... laugh, but I'm gonna, they're going to give us a signal for a little break right here. Mm -hmm. And that will keep everybody waiting on Tinder hooks because when we come back, I want to talk about your criminal past. No. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody, stay tuned. We'll be right back. The Cutting Edge Salon, located on the campus of Suncoast Technical College, is open to the public for styling services, coloring services, chemical texturing, nail coloring, manicures and pedicures, hair removal services, facials, and more. All of the beauty services are performed by the students of the Suncoast Technical College's cosmetology program under the supervision of its award-winning instructors. The Cutting Edge Salon is open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. until 2 p.m. And on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursdays, evening appointments are also available from 4 until 9 p.m. For appointments, call 941-924-1365, extension 62343. The Cutting Edge Salon, located on the campus of Suncoast Technical College, is a cut above. Welcome back. You're watching Suncoast Spotlight, courtesy of the Education Channel and Suncoast Technical College and the Sarasota County Film and Entertainment Office. I'm Jeannie Corcoran, your film commissioner. And with me is Bob Layton, legendary comic artist, writer, producer, oh, entrepreneur, filmmaker. And alleged criminal. And an alleged criminal. <laughs> I, I brought that up because I think it's such a funny story. Tell me that story. Tell, tell the viewers well, the story. Well, it, to some degree, it's in, it's in the Charlton movie as right. well. But... Um, and part of it, uh, they asked me if I would confess to have committing a felon on camera. And of course, I, I said, why not? Why not? Yeah, sure. Right. Um, the statute of limitations. Charlton long didn't believe in the uh, intrinsic value of original art. So at one point, this is in the 1970s, like 74, 75, right? Uh, they decided, they found out that they could get $5 a, a pound for bulk paper. So they decided they're going to shred all the archives of art that they had. In all the original artwork. By some of the great comic book illustrators of all time. So the assistant editor there, a friend of mine, Bill Pearson and I, uh, we engineered a break-in and we stole all the original art out of the company and took it back. In fact, he had an old blue, like sky blue Dodge Dart and we had paper weighed so much that I think we broke the, the suspension on the rear end of his car. <laughs> but saved the so artwork. Much, we saved the artwork. So we Killed spent, the car, we spent months the after that at Bill's place Putting them, shoving it into manila envelopes and mailing it anonymously back to the artist who, who originally created it. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't until like 20 or 30 years later that Steve Ditko, one of the artists who was working for me at Valiant, at time I brought it up to him and he goes, so you're the one who sent that? He goes, I was always wondering where that artwork came from because, you know, they never had a policy of returning sure. art. And the crazy thing is nobody, no one at Charlton even knew the stuff was missing. That's how much they didn't care, you know? Didn't they use it for floor mats when it rained? Yeah, sometimes when it rained, they would take the like, original art pages and just throw them on the floor to soak up uh, uh, you know, snow and, and rain and stuff like and that. Mud and mud. Yeah, oh. or, or a Boy Scout troop would come in and they would just give them away, you know? Mm -hmm. It's just, like, it's frightening to think about as a creator. Mm -hmm. But that's, that was the difference between then and now. Right. And one of your good friends, who's actually visiting Sarasota at the same time you are, uh, Skip Farrell, who was a comic publisher and worked with you he on a variety of things. He yeah. has framed original artwork throughout his house, doesn't he? Comic oh, oh, art. He, Skip just... has one of the, the largest art collections I've ever seen in my life. Wow. I, uh, I, I don't know. I, you'd have to ask him exactly how many pieces he has. But, yeah, it's amazing, you know. But... Uh, uh, Skip's been a dear friend, and uh, you know, like you said, he you has his own gallery. No, right? but look, you know, a guy's a friend when you lose him a half a million dollars, and they still want to hang out with you. Okay, <laughs> was that on <laughs> graphic novels or comic books? <laughs> comic books. Comic you know. books. Well, we tried. We tried to beat the system. We actually came up with a, a business plan that would bypass the monopolistic uh, distribution system of comics. Mm -hmm. But we were a little ahead of our time, you know, because we were we were e-commerce uh. in the early 2000s, right at the, the turn of the century, and uh, things weren't really 
uh, ripe for that at that point. Because mm-hmm. I, I also forgot how incredibly cheap comic book uh, shops are. Right. Yeah, most of those guys were not wired to the internet. They were still using a cigar box for a cash <laughs> register, you know, so... Uh, it was a good business model. Kind of that just, little adding machine. We were a little, we were kind of, we were a little, we were the kind of Preston Tucker of our, our era. We were a little ahead of our time. Right. Uh, well, the, you're still ahead of the time. I mean, you are in, you're involved in films, you're involved in television programs, cartoon, morning cartoon shows, see your work, um, video games, everything. You have your finger in every electronic pie as I, well as the fine arts. This, this figure right here mm-hmm. is probably the most used uh, piece of merchandising that Marvel ever has. I'm the wow. unofficial king of Marvel merchandising. Mm-hmm. It's about like on 10,000 items. And you tell know. me a little bit about Ant-Man because that was an unexpected oh, major that, hit, that wasn't was it? That was crazy, yeah, because my co-writer and I created Scott Lang, which was a new version of Hank Pym's character. Mm-hmm. And we did like a, a, a two-shot story, a two, two-part story in a showcase book at Marvel called Marvel Premiere. Back, this is 1978, all right? So he appeared in only two issues. And that was it. We made him a supporting character in Iron Man, but not as Ant-Man. He was just there as Scott Lang. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the crazy thing was, one of the kids who bought that book way back when was Edgar Wright, who... On, on the basis of those two stories, became inspired. And he decided that he wanted, you know, when he, the time came around, he, he actually went to Marvel and pitched it. It's the only Marvel movie that was pitched outside of their docket mm-hmm. and stuff. But he's Edgar Wright. I mean, he's done some of the great, you know, movies of recent memory. So to him, that was a labor of love, something that started all from those two issues, which is crazy to me because, you know, I, 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 we did it. It was nice and we went on. And I've signed more of those books now than I have in the 40 years since the book was published. It's just, and I go around the world now, and Ant Man is Scott Lang. Ant Man is like a huge phenomenon. And they're doing a sequel. Yeah, the movie was and, such a hit. They're doing you know, a sequel. and it's like you, it, you can knock me over with a feather because it's just it's not anything you would ever expect to happen. It's so strange. So you never know what what you do will have some sort of lasting effect later, creative kids. So, you know, so keep that in mind. Yeah, everything matters. And they're going to make us take another break, but we'll be back shortly. And we're going to talk about a few other things that you do. I want to learn about ROM. No. No. All right, maybe we won't. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Career Source Suncoast is Florida's nationally recognized workforce system, connecting job seekers with the skills needed, not only for finding employment, but throughout a career. Our satellite office on the campus of Suncoast Technical College is open to the college's students, staff, and the public alike, offering assistance in resume writing, job searching, and registering with EmployFlorida.com, the state's website for job seekers, where you can complete and post a professional resume, research companies, set up job alerts, complete a professional reference sheet, and conduct job interview preparation. The Suncoast Technical College's satellite office is open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. And their services are always free. So stop by or call 941-927-5286. Career Source Suncoast is your one stop for career guidance and preparation. Welcome back to Sunco Spotlight. We have with us Bob Layton, legendary comic artist and multifaceted, talented guy. And you've just done so much, I'm not sure where to begin. You are still affiliated with Valiant, the one of the, the comic company that you helped found and one of the owners of. I, I do uh, Were you just there recently? Yeah, I, I was just up at their offices a couple of weeks ago because uh, uh, the 30th anniversary of the company, you know, being one of the founders, the 30th anniversary is coming up in about a year and a half. And they kind of wanted me to come back and do something. Plus, the, the new kids there have never met one of the founders, and they kind of thought it would be nice for me to come into the office of New York and, and do that. Uh, when you mentioned Rom, what I do from time to time, I don't really work in comics anymore, mm-hmm. but what I do from time to time is because I do have a fan base out there, and I kind of miss it occasionally. So uh, if somebody asks me really nice, I, I will sit down and I will do a cover. You know, or something like that. And usually it's for some sort of special project. The guys at IDW, they approached me about Rom mm-hmm. because uh, uh, Rom Space Knight was a book based on a toy long ago at Marvel. But it was a fairly popular book, and I used to be the regular cover artist on it. So when they 
IDW got the rights to, to revive it, they came to me and said, hey, look, you're one of the original guys on it. Would you do a cover for us? So I did that. Okay. So you're into a lot of a lot of projects kind of stick to you forever. You, yeah, well, they come and go and I come have, back I to visit. I have two major legacies in comics. I have, obviously, this guy. Right. And then I have Valiant, mm -hmm. you know. So this guy, my, my legacy with him is pretty secure. But Valiant, again, is a, a company that's burgeoning. It's growing. Mm -hmm. The, the new value. It's very different than my original company, but they're they're making great strides, and they're uh, uh, and I'm friends with everybody up there. You know, it's mm -hmm. like so. Uh, it's important to me that they succeed. So whenever they I can whatever I can do to help you know you lend my, my myself to them to help them do that, I'm I'm more than willing to. Mm -hmm. But I, I, although I've left comics, I never totally leave. There's mm -hmm. always a little part of me that wants to go back and do a little something now and then. So right. It's true. That's where Ron came from. It, you made a, a really interesting comment, one of the places I've heard you speak, where you said how the culture wars have turned out. Tell me a little bit about your feeling on, on who won the culture wars. Well, that's how I, that's how I met James, <laughs> you know, uh -huh. in a lot of ways. Because what happened was I was living here in Florida at the time, okay? Because mm -hmm. uh, uh, Skip and I just uh, shut down Future Comics. And I was back at freelancing, and then the word came that Marvel was about to produce Iron Man. And then I got a request to come out there and you know, work on the on the movie. Because mm -hmm. so, you recreated the character. Yeah, you completely basically, redesigned the, the movies, it. The, the Iron Man before I came along was basically Marvel couldn't give the book away, you know. And it was one of those things where I turned it into what, you know, in the movies, the rock star Tony Stark and, the, you know, the, all the different armors. And all, I created Rhodey and, and Justin Hammer and all those characters. So, uh, so when I went out there, the first thing I realized after being out there a few weeks is that everybody, every producer, everybody out there was a comic geek, you know? <laughs> they were all, the reason why comic movies are, and TV shows are exploded is because this is the material that they grew up on. Right. And they, that's what they go to, to, to plumb now, you know? It's like you think about in the 90s, everything in Hollywood was remakes of old TV shows because back then, those producers, that's what they grew up on. So they did Bewitched and the Beverly Hillbillies and, you know, right. uh, Dukes of Hazard and all that kind of stuff. This generation grew up with comic books. And I realized when I was out there, and I, I didn't tend to stay, but I realized that everyone knew who I was. And I said, well, this seems like a golden opportunity. I don't really have to break down doors to get meetings. You know, this would, I should take advantage of it. So I stayed. Right. When we come back from our next break, we're going to talk about where you're headed with your next movie based on a comic book character that is sort of a cult favorite, but maybe the people watching haven't heard of it before, right? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. So we're going to come back shortly, stay with us, and learn more. Tech Tots Preschool is located on the campus of Suncoast Technical College and is open to the public for preschool and voluntary pre-K classes. Tech Tots has been serving the Sarasota community since 1977, offering a safe and nurturing environment for children three years of age and up. The students in Suncoast Technical College's early childhood education program work side by side with the professional licensed childcare providers learning the skills of quality childcare services and offering a low child to adult ratio. Tech Tots childcare services are offered at no charge to students of Suncoast Technical College and are available to the public at a reasonable rate on a first come first served basis. For more information, call Tech Tots at 941-924-1365, extension 62383. Tech Tots, a great start for your tot. Welcome back. You're watching Suncoast Spotlight. And our guest, Bob Layton, is going to talk about more comic books, but also about movies and TV and things that are being adapted from comic books, as well as characters he's created that may become a comic book, after they become a movie. Um, or at the same time. Or at the same time, simultaneously. Yes. Tell me about Shambler. Can you talk about it? I can talk a little bit about it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Shambler was a project that started uh, years ago in Hollywood that was actually funded, and then it was one of those things we went into uh, pre-production, mm -hmm. and the company who was funding us went under. <laughs> and so that, which is like, what James could tell you is a common story, okay? Right. Well, that's, what's, that, uh, that's what builds success. You know, yeah. true people who truly succeed, entrepreneurs that really succeed, they fail multiple times because that's where they learn what works and what doesn't work, and they 
improve every single time. Everybody knows the story of Rocky. He, he couldn't, That's right. Seven years, he couldn't get it made, you right. know, and then finally gets it made and wins the Academy Award. I saw an interview about um, uh, Deadpool, and they said it took seven or nine years to yeah, get that well, made. So. Funny you mention that, because Chandler very much is in the vein of Deadpool, right. although it was actually created before Deadpool. But, uh, you know, through the ages, they've done uh, modern-day adaptations of werewolves and... Uh, you know, vampires and Frankenstein, but they've never done a modern day mummy that wasn't based on old Egypt or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So The Shambler is kind of a punk rock mummy movie where he's wrapped in crime scene tape. And the, the, the whole tagline is he's a walking crime scene, but he's kind of a monster hero. It's done, I love horror comedies, right. okay? You look at stuff like James Gunn did with Slither mm -hmm. or whatever, stuff like that. I just, I love stuff like that or, or you know, Evil Dead 2, that kind of thing. So Shambler's very much in that vein. Mm -hmm. That it's it's a lot of laughs, a lot of violence, a lot of fun, a lot of laughs. But that's a huge Did I market. A lot of laughs. A lot of laughs. Okay. A lot of laughs. So uh, uh, so we're gonna we're gonna make that right here in Florida. That's exciting. Yeah. It's gonna be great. And you know, timing is one of those things you hear so much about. Either your timing's good, your timing's bad, or the timing was perfect, or you were in the right time at the right place. We were talking about Hercules. When you started the Hercules series, it actually got ahead of the curve in terms of coming out before Wolverine, right? Well, well, the thing was Marvel wanted to create the first miniseries in comic history. Up to that point, every comic that was ever produced was a ongoing thing. Mm -hmm. They had our idea of doing contained stories. They, there was something, they, a package they wanted to experiment with. Mm -hmm. So they asked, two people asked me and they asked Frank Miller. Oh, Sin City, right. Yeah, Sin City's Frank Miller, but this mm -hmm. was early young Frank Miller and mm -hmm. young, young Bob Layton, mm -hmm. basically to create the two, you know, the first two miniseries in Marvel history. And I happened to be faster than Frank, so. <laughs> you were the first to the finish but line. But I was yeah. also writer-artist. I was, I was doing everything on right. it, so it was a one-man band kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so I, I actually got the, the credit as the first comic miniseries in comic book history because I actually finished mine two weeks earlier than Frank's, and so they were, they were able to publish it first. Right. When I was but in, as I said, Wolverine actually sold better. Yes, Wolverine <laughs> is better remembered. But Hercules is an iconic, historic, uh, mytho mythological character, well, comic book character, feature films, TV shows. But he TV was never shows. a major character in no. the Marvel Universe, and I, 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 my thought was to create something that was uh, uh, relevant mm -hmm. and bring him into that because they already had Thor but they didn't have anything from the Greek pantheon of characters right. but mine turned out to be a, a space opera with him being drunk and hanging out with a with a, a, a you know a robot and a transvestite oh yeah. sounds completely like historical uh, Hercules uh, I no I'm just kind of a Barbarella <laughs> fan so my Hercules is more like <laughs> like a male Barbarella you know uh, yeah. are you we listening to that ladies you know a male Barbarella yeah, it's yeah, time the women had something to root for but you know over the years I, I've done over 900 pages of Hercules stuff I would go back and I would do another mini series and I go back and do a graphic novel and I go back and do another mini series and I would just kind of keep that little space saga going hmm. you know which was way fun but it, it was very tongue-in-cheek I love doing comedies and I'm sure mm -hmm. Uh, and satire and parody, yeah. and, right? Uh, you know me. It's like uh, I'm not a very serious person. No. You know, yeah, you know that. Yes, but uh, you're a very talented person. You take your work seriously. Yeah, but I, I, even I like though you to have make fun, people laugh. Mm -hmm. So a lot of my movies will will have uh, comedy elements to it, mm -hmm. without a doubt. Right. And we're going to have you speaking at other places in Sarasota County, and people will be hearing more and more about your career and your accomplishments, and they'll hear some of what you said here today in more detail. Um, I think we are going to take a break, but then we'll be back to close the show. So stay with us. Don't go away. The Automotive Service Technology Program at Suncoast Technical College prepares students for careers in high-demand areas of automotive specialization, such as brakes, suspension and steering, electrical systems, engine repair, transmission and transaxles, heating and air conditioning, and much more. For more information, log on to suncoast.edu or call 941-924-1365. Suncoast Technical College, career in a year. Welcome back. You're watching Suncoast Spotlight, courtesy of the Education Channel and Suncoast Technical College and the Sarasota County Film and Entertainment Office. I'm your host, Jeannie Corcoran, the Film Commissioner for your region, and my wonderful guest today, Bob Layton. Uh, too many talents to list in the closing portion of our show, but if you've been watching, you know the list is long. And you travel all the time. Tell me about your travels. Well, that's one of the things about my job that I love the most, yeah. you know, because uh, the, the thing of the, the phenomenon of comic book conventions 
has exploded all over the world. Mm-hmm. They, I mean, one of the great things now with Iron Man and Ant Man being such international phenomena, because uh, Iron Man is huge in China and it's like huge in Japan and uh, all around the world. That right. just amazes me. I mean, next year I'm I'm going to uh, New, New Delhi, India, and to uh, Saint Petersburg, Russia. You know, all because of the phenomenon of mm-hmm. Iron Man and Ant Man and the Avengers stuff. Um, but for me, you know, too, I, I love traveling. I'm one of those I'm one of those gluttons for punishment. I really mm-hmm. love to travel. So, in fact, next week after we're done here with this event, I'm off to Scotland. You know, I'm going to spend my birthday doing a con in in Scotland. Uh, and then I come back here, and then I'm off to uh, uh, Luca. Italy and uh, to uh, Belgium. Wow! After that, yeah. <laughs> and you uh, don't get jet lag. No, not really. Uh, you know, and it's like it's it's, but it's so much fun to to, to meet people from who've been reading this stuff printed in other mm-hmm. languages for forty years. You know, and they they're so excited. You know, when they finally get a chance to meet you in person, and I, I love that. I love it because I can go visit a city in a foreign country, and people come to me. They come to see me, so it's not like I have to go out and find them. They come to me, and they, they tell me where to go and where to uh, eat, and where what's, to eat good. And what's good, exactly what I need to see. And, you know, it, it's it's an amazing phenomenon. I mean, I, the love I feel from the fans uh, is, is amazing, and the fact that I get to see really interesting places All and they the pay world. for it. Did I mention that? that they, <laughs> they pay for everything. Uh, we have a very we have a very interesting clip, I hope they can roll it in here, of you many years ago at an early signing and appearance and you have a mustache. That cheesy that mustache. That cheesy oh my god, that's why yeah it's so uh-huh. awful. Yes, I know. I don't know where my, my videographer Jason found that at. Uh-huh. But uh, I, I'm like, really? This is the clip <laughs> you found with me with the cheesy mustache? I'm, Obviously, had no self awareness at that point. You know? oh, actually, you were just you were in the trend of the era. Oh, I, I was. I you think, looked I hip think back I was then. Twenty five. Right? Yeah. Okay. So uh, you're going to be making movies in the Tampa Bay area. You're going to probably adapt them to graphic novels, possibly comic books, and just possibly video games. Who knows? Yeah. You've got a busy time ahead. My 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 biggest problem with with uh, uh, the the comics to film. Okay, let's mm-hmm. let's say right now, as we were talking about earlier with with Skip and James that. The comic book phenomenon, the characters have never been more popular, mm-hmm. but the comic books aren't the place where people are, are jumping on. That's not the starting point for them now. It's you mean the it's print, the print, the print medium. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. it's Arrow, it's it's the Avengers movies, and it's Iron Man, and it's you know, mm-hmm. and it, it's not Batman v Superman, but it, you know, it's like a, <laughs> no offense, Michael. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no offense, Michael. Uh, but I'm just saying, it's it's the that popular culture, mm-hmm. uh, in film and television, Daredevil and, and, and Jessica Jones and mm-hmm. you know, Luke Cage. Even the are, even the secret agents of Marvel. And yeah, they call agents that of Shield, Shield yeah. right? That's all. That's become the jumping on point mm-hmm. for people now. You know, uh, it's a it's a whole different thing. But if those people are interested in the comics and they go, they by some odd chance find a comic book shop. The comics are totally different than the, the, the movie mm-hmm. and TV properties. So it's one of those things where the colors and cuffs don't match, where people go to get more of what they saw on TV, and it doesn't bear any resemblance to right. it at all. Right. There's a disconnect between the two industries. Mm-hmm. So you know, my idea was to basically create properties that for film or for television, but release the comic book simultaneously, and the fact that they're ex- it's exactly like mm-hmm. the show. You know, so and I video games. That's, I, they're doing a lot of that, of video game releases yes. that are simultaneous to major film that's releases. That's the mobility that I will have. That's that's the agility I will have here in Florida to do something like that. Well, we're looking forward to it. And we really just so appreciate you having been here, Bob. Thank you for being such a I good always sport. Love chatting with you. If you they gave that. an Academy Award for being a good sport, Bob would get it. Oh. So you've been great. Thanks for being with us. And to all of you watching, tune into Suncoast Spotlight next time and enjoy more wonderful people like this. Thanks for being here.